Hi, I'm Melissa Turner with bmagazine.org. I am joined by Mohammed Ismail with Egyptians Abroad for Democracy. And they're doing some incredible global level work. Uh, these last few years, we've partnered together on conferences in Harvard and Washington, D.C. and the Carter Center in Atlanta, uh, talking about human rights in Egypt. And today, I uh, just want to look back on that history a little bit, but talk about some of the important things they're working on now currently. Mohammed, it's great to have you with us. Hey, Melissa, thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Always good to be with you. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this. Um, you were directly involved from the very beginning. Tell us a little bit about that personal experience. Okay, briefly, I'll tell you, since 2011, I was so proud of the Egyptian Revolution. I was doing my master's degree in uh, Kennesaw University in USA, and I couldn't go back to be with the people on the street, which is... Uh, uh, which is I loved. I was so proud. I mean, every time I was in classes in the school, I was there talking about Egypt. I feel extra proud. Uh, and sometimes they even cancel the class for me to talk about Egypt. Just imagine that. See, I'm, I'm not kidding you. This is, I can see that happening. <laughs> yes, yes. Especially after the 18, the first 18 days, how the whole the, the international media has nothing to do but covering Egypt. Anyway. Uh, I started working on some uh, projects to help the economy in Egypt and get some investors and all that. So I'm involved from day one, try to build, uh, slowly but surely build with the people of Egypt again. I mean, I, I knew it would take time, as it would be a big challenge, but at least we would be on the right path. So this is the beginning of my involvement until I finished my uh, degree, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> until I finished my degree. And then after that, I went for a long, long vacation to be to meeting people in person and start working on how to build the country economically. And then after that, um, anyway, things happened. 2013 came and I knew it before it happened in July 2013, the military coup. So I, I went to Egypt. I went to Egypt in June to start warning the people because I saw Sisi is playing the people of and trying to use the opponents of the military to only support and help him, not Egypt. He played everybody against everybody. So I, I, I saw that picture early enough. So I put it on Facebook. I talked to people. I tried to be on the TV to talk about it. But, you know, as we unfortunately, it didn't work out very well because his media was very much, it did a, a brainwash for to a lot of people at that time because it doesn't matter if you're, Muslim Brotherhood or not, just by being Egyptian, you should not support the military coup because it's a, at the end of the day, with the Muslim Brotherhood, we can, next election, we can work together and take them for a democrat in a democratic way, take them from the, you know, from being a president of their party to be, and the part of being in the part, have the majority in the parliament, uh, in the Egyptian parliament. So, but anyway, nobody listened. Uh, and unfortunately, it happened. They removed the first elected president, uh, uh, God bless his soul, Mohammed Morsi. <coughs> and then uh, from that point, we made a group called Egyptian Abroad for Democracy in Rabat Square. We were in the sit-in, and we wanted to tell the people, we're not Muslim Brotherhood. We're not, uh, we, we're not affiliated with any, any whatsoever, any political group. And even at that time, we were not even NGO. We just made a group called Egyptian Abroad for Democracy. People yeah. that live abroad and have a dual citizenship, Egyptian and other citizenship, whether they are, whether the, you know, the citizenship is American citizenship, European, Canadian. So when we let everybody know that we are the Egyptians, refuse of rejecting the military coup. And we are here in the street to say that we support democracy and freedom. And this is how it started. And then everybody, when we went back home, we'll start working on uh, founding or finding this organization, NGO, and we register in America, and we'll right. start work with that. And this is when I start to know you, when yes. we do that. And, yes. Yeah. So that's a little bit who I am. I'm a business guy, MBA. I'm involved in this situation, Egypt situation, not because I'm a politician. Right. Um, I am a human rights activist. I became a human rights activist after 2013, and I'm supporting... Uh, democracy and freedom for Egypt. And I don't care what happened after that. I just want to see that. I want to see Egypt in the right path. I know it will take time. America 
did not become did not become America uh, until what how, how many years it took it took a hundred it took actually tens of years sure. to be United yeah. States for them. same thing with Europe and all that so I'm expecting right. Egypt will go through hurdles and then later on at the end of the day Egypt will will be on the right path yeah I'm done speaking here. yes yes correct. absolutely and um, this is definitely work that comes from your heart that shows yes. and um, your passion shows through and all of the hard work that you've been doing these past few years most currently we're working on the United Nations COP 27 um, being held in Egypt of all places this year uh, with 65,000 political prisoners being held there. Um, and we've been working this past year ever since that was announced, um, trying to raise awareness and um, making statement letters to government officials, global leaders, um, calling for these political prisoners to be released prior to the UN COP27. Tell us a little bit more about how this came about and the work that we've been doing so far. Okay, you know, uh, first of all, I just want to highlight, they're not 65,000. This is the, the official numbers, that the number that we, the human rights organization were able to get official, but there are a lot of people that are not even recorded on the prison. I would say sure. there are easy numbers, over 100,000 prisoners. But this, just imagine, the human rights organization, like Human Rights Watch on a message, and actually say 65, that's telling you that at least double this number in the prison because you know the Egyptian government is not getting at least the exact numbers of what's right. going on in the prison. In prison. Yeah. So uh, we go back to COP twenty seven. I'm thinking, and it's first of all, it's a it's a big big condemn to the international community to have uh, to have Egypt. I don't want to say Egypt. I want to say Sisi to host COP twenty seven. Because when you give him that credibility, you're giving him a green light and you're telling him, Abdel Fattah Sisi, General Sisi, keep killing the Egyptian people. Keep imprisoning thousands of Egyptian people. Keep torturing them. Keep raping the women. And, you know, keep doing the virgin test for the uh, virgin girls. You know about this incident too yeah. as well. The virginity test as well. So this is a sign to the people of Egypt that we are supporting the guy that's torturing and killing you and he stole your democracy and freedom. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, human rights work only if the, gov the international com community angry with the Egyptian government. So this is, but at least we're putting everything in front of everybody else. And since they're doing the COP27 regardless, Let's take advantage of that. COP27, if you have any, right. people has to, uh, happen, it has to demonstrate, right? People going there worldwide, it has to be free to protest, free demonstration, and the people is coming from all over the world. But we all know the Egyptian regime, they never allow that. They never allow freedom. They never allow peacefully demonstration or protest. But right now right. we heard uh, the foreign minister, Sam Ashokri, he made a statement clear we're allowing peaceful demonstration and when he say that that means all over egypt are we going to see mm -hmm. that or not i, right. I guess i guess they're gonna well, remain to be seen of, yes i think we're gonna see all <laughs> kind of yes exactly i think we're gonna see all kind of power or uh, our, our kind of pressure to stop that but the good <laughs> thing is media the international media will be in egypt at that time from the august August 7 to, oh, I mean, sorry, November 7 to November 18, 2022. Mm -hmm. So if you try to do that, you'll be, you're, you're covered, you're exposed to the international community. Also, right. you have thousands of individuals from human rights organizations will be on the ground in Egypt. Plus, you have the politician, you have the presidents of different countries, United States, Canada, European presidents as well. What are you going to do? So this is here, I, I'm saying, you you and I and other group, Code Pink and other, we work with six, seven different organizations, actually probably more than that, in a campaign to uh, for COP27. We've been sending yes. letters. We have been uh, putting a lot of pressure to allow demonstration. First of all, we did to stop that, to stop the COP27 to be hosted in Egypt, but we know it might not succeed. We, we right. might not be successful in that because they have to do a lot of work to move it 
from one place to the other. So being realistic, okay, we'll take that, but at least allow the people of Egypt to demonstrate. And this is what we put the pressure on it. And we talk to the international media. We talk to the politician. We're doing, you and I and other groups, we're doing advocacy and lobbying and the Congress and in Europe. We want to tell them at least, at least make sure CC allowed the peaceful demonstration, and not just not just the foreigners, not just the right. media for the international community, but make that demonstration and freedom for everybody, including the Egyptian people. So this yes. is what we're working on together, and hopefully you and I and Code Pink and Randy for Peace and International Action and other organizations that we work with will will achieve what we're looking for. Yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, it really is an incredible moment. The world's, <laughs> the world's eyes are on Egypt like never before. And yes. um, it's, it's great to see so many human rights organizations and NGOs coming uh, alongside of us and working on this issue. Uh, I've seen so many petitions and statement letters and groups getting involved, trying to raise awareness. And it can only help to have all of these groups working together on this common cause. Uh, bringing attention exactly. to Egypt like exactly. never before. And exactly. like you say, it, it might not bring the end of the human rights violations, but definitely uh, puts Egypt on the world stage like never before. And hopefully uh, when we go spot. back to government leaders, uh, they will know what we're really talking about, that these people need to be free. Okay. Exactly. I agree, agree with you. And you know, before I forget to, I wanted to mention one thing. Human rights violation to the people of Egypt it's not necessary to the people inside Egypt. It's people like me, never been a politician. I, I never even work in human rights all my life until 2013. Just imagine because, because I defend victims of human rights and because I ask for democracy and freedom and I expose, expose the CC's regime to the international community. I cannot go back to Egypt. I cannot go see right. if one of my family is dying. COVID-19 had a lot of family members died and were sick. I couldn't even see them. I couldn't see my first degree family. I couldn't, if I have any business to do with Egypt, I'm completely cut off with all of that. Why? Just imagine, Melissa, you were here talking about Biden and you decide, you, you criticism President Biden and they said they kick you out of the United States because you said you're, right. you're, you're, you're not... Uh, uh, you're not welcome in, in your own home country. <laughs> you're, right. You're not a pet. They, they because you Egypt. protested or posted on Facebook or whatever it might be. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And they link, link yeah. Egypt with Sisi. If you criticize Sisi, they put you like you're criticizing Egypt. Even if you do so, you still have the right. But they make, they make the, the Egyptian media that been controlled by Egypt and Saudi Arabia and inside Egypt and United Emirates, they link everything they link CC to Egypt. If you say the word CC, you're saying a bad word about Egypt. And they, they, they start to criticize, oh, you're not loyal to your home, your home country, you're not patriot, and things like that. That's, that's a game they play. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and then they start to accuse you of certain things, and not just accusing you in the media. They take that to the court, because the court is being used by General CC. And they tell them, okay, go ahead and... Uh, put Muhammad and so on, on on a case that he by by this way by law now we use the law the rule of law uh, right. under it's our under our control so Muhammad cannot even go back to Egypt by the law right. and they yeah. put me in accusation that I don't even know about and this is not just me this is thousands of people just by talking right. even you Melissa I don't think yeah. you can go to Egypt even I don't think so either <laughs> yes just imagine how this regime is brutal I, i'm serious I'm, I'm saying that and i'm sad i'm sad yeah. that this is very sad i want to see egypt in the right path the only way we see egypt in the right path is removing that killer abdel fatah yeah. all right go yeah. ahead I'm speaking then well you know that brings us to um one of the most important projects you've been working on over the last couple of years in addition to the un cop 27 awareness we've been raising and that is the Operation Surly and the lawsuits that Egyptians Abroad for Democracy have lodged in France. Um, and it just went to court, what, two weeks ago? This is a pretty yes. big deal. 
It got picked up by The Guardian. It was published uh, in the news yeah, all across Europe. Yes, France, way for actually yes. this is not the first case. The first case was uh, was we work with the uh, Ethiopian dam that built uh, that was built in Ethiopia and eliminate the border to reach out to Egypt. And this that that Ethiopian dam were like it would never build by the way he built it mm-hmm. unless if CC General CC signed an agreement two thousand fifteen allow him to do so to do so. Because right before that, there was too many agreements. He cannot, he cannot build the dam unless if Egypt and Sudan agree on how the dam be built. After Sisi wanted to get the African support and Ethiopian support. So what he did is he signed an agreement at the expense of the people of Egypt. Because you know the, 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 the Nile River? This is our life. This is the thing the people drink right. and eat and grow plants and all that based on the Nile River. Yes, so, absolutely. 2015, he gave Ethiopia a full green light. They can do whatever they want to do without consulting Egypt or Sudan. Just imagine, just because, just because, to get the support of Ethiopia and, and that support some of the African country, he sacrificed by more than 100 million people for his own purpose to stay in power. Right. So we did, that was the first case we did. We were able to get a lot of victims. They did a power of attorney to our lawyer, our actual lawyers. And we did, we filed a case inside Egypt. We did a complaint to the attorney general and the attorney general, why we did that, we know he's part of Sisi's regime, but we want to hold him accountable. When Sisi goes down, we will tell him that we send you a complaint and you didn't investigate it, so you're part of the conspiracy. So yeah. We were doing this and we know that he will do nothing, but we're going to hold him accountable, him and the parliament members, because we sent two complaints, official complaint, and we received the confirmation that they have received. So we're yeah. looking for, we're looking in the future, whenever that guy goes down, you guys will go down and you'll have the same accusation because you didn't do your job. Anyway, we'll right. move on to uh, uh, Operation Serving. We, yes. we, we chose to go on that line, take that legal line, which is we're going to sue him for everything he's doing. He's not, we're not going to let him go easy, bit by easy with what he, he's doing. Operation Serving, this is just briefly tell you what it is. The, the French intelligence and the government, they won't coordinate with Egypt, with the government of Egypt. As I said, I don't want to say Egypt because he doesn't represent Egypt. He's, uh, when I say Egypt, I mean Sisi's regime. So they agree together and they, they're going to put, they use devices, intelligent devices, and some uh, like joint, for, joint forces mm-hmm. on the border of Libya and Egypt. And then, at, uh, at the, and then the French will dig on the they allow them to dig on the ground to pull for oil and things like that. They get a big mutual benefit. At that right. time, the French government and intelligence, they start giving Egypt, Egypt uh, uh, some signs, tell me there's some truck drivers coming here, they're coming there, they're giving him about people going in and out. And they and the, the main reason they did that joint effort to fight terrorism, fight terrorism. Right. But, Unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, the people were going back and forth. They, they were not terrorists. Some of those were people that they smuggled. Some people that they work. And the smuggler, when I'm talking about smuggler, they smuggle like cigarettes, they smuggle some clothes, smuggle things like that. And then some of those are, some of those are just people going through the borders. I'm talking about thousands of people. And then uh, the French police, I mean, sorry, the French military, the one they're working on on the scene, they start giving to the leaders some uh, signs. We're not doing the right thing. They're killing innocent people. They're killing. They're not terrorists. We are part of that. So they give that signal to their leaders, and their leader didn't do anything. So they decided to leak the information to Disclose. Disclose is an NGO website that they do their own investigation. And this is in November of last year, 2021, when the case started to go viral. And then it stayed viral for like 30 to 45 days. After that, there was some pressure happened. It disappeared. 
when we mm. saw this, we have decided to take over and work on it. And we found two different lawyers, one in French and one in the United States. She's an American uh, English lady. Uh, her mm-hmm. name is Heidi. And then another uh, legal team. We get consultation. It took from us eight months to put all the cases together. And we had to pull, bring Code Pink with us because in, in the French court, you have it's a little bit complicated. You have to have certain amount of years to be NGO and things like that. And then at right. the same time, we file it in, uh, at the UN as well. So the case, we were not expected it's going to go viral. As soon as we file and we did the press release, <laughs> yeah. AFP, AFP, the one gave the check off. news. Yeah, AFP, the one gave the news to everyone, the credible news, share it on their website. So everybody took it from them. So you have France 24, you have BBC, you have the, the Guardian, this close. I mean, name it, even in different countries in Europe. A lot of, we it's had incredible. more than enough. B magazine, you guys, one of the main yeah. people already talked about it. Yes. So, so very much, and we're we're keeping going. We're not gonna give up. Our our capacity is not big enough or good enough, but we're doing what we can. We're doing our yes. best. Melissa, you work with us, and you know that we're very limited on what we can do, manpower, money wise. We collect the money from each other to be able to do what we can do, but that's why we. We're going slowly but surely and one step at a time. But yes. we want to make sure it's a quality step. It's an effective step. And exactly. and now we want to tell CC. I want to, if you don't mind, at the end, I want to give two messages. I want to tell CC and his regime, regardless you stay in power or not, we're not going to leave you alone legally. Right. We're going to be the people that living abroad. They're going to do everything they have in their power to take you off that power that you have in Egypt on the people of Egypt. And even if you even if you get out of that, we're not gonna leave you alone. We're gonna hold you accountable for every when you killed or tortured or raped. And we're telling the people, the media that support CC, the judges, the media, uh, I mean, I, the media, the judges, the lawyers, everyone, the military leaders, we're telling them as well too. We're gonna hold each and every one of you accountable because unfortunately you didn't work for your oath. You had you have an oath that you're going to protect Egypt and the people of Egypt. You betray them. You're going to hold them accountable, whether they are in Egypt or outside of Egypt. If you come outside of Egypt, they're going to take you to the court in Europe, take you to the court in the United States. You're going to be surrounded everywhere. And the, my other message to the people of Egypt, we live once and we die once. I mean, freedom is not free. You have an opportunity at COP27. The whole world are eyes in Egypt from November 8th to November 7th to November 18th. And probably even the whole month because a lot of people will do work before and after. My right. advice, I live abroad. I'm not going to tell you to go and sleep. I'm leaving it up to you. I'm just letting yeah. you know that it's an opportunity. I don't think they're going to come back again. Yeah. Every the, the international eye, the Egypt under the spotlight. Take it or leave it. It's an opportunity. Thank exactly. you very much. For- Keep speaking up and don't lose hope. Exactly. That's, that's the message. It. Thank you, Mohammed. Exactly. Thank you so much Thank for joining for me today. Me. And uh, we'll talk Thank soon. You Thank you very Bye. much. Sure. All right. Bye bye.